perfect, man. Julius, I was um, very excited to be talking to you today, man. I've been following your career lately. It's very interesting, man. I uh, appreciate that, man. Yeah, for sure, man. So appreciate let, that. Let's talk about your, your you know, beginnings in powerlifting. I understand, you know, I read some things about you. You were uh, thinking of playing in NFL originally, right? You were going through a lot of different things. How did you end up being a powerlifter? Uh, so I started lifting in the basement of a uh, of a rehab facility. Uh, the, I was in rehab for, for drugs and alcohol long term. Um, so instead of uh, a lengthy prison sentence, uh, I got to go to rehab for for uh, I had to do three years. And um, so in this house, it's about a hundred year old home where they converted these homes into uh, a recovery center. And in the basement, they had um, a bench and some and some plates. And you know, once I got off work, you can't go anywhere. It's a uh, it's a it's an in house facility. So once you go to work, you have to stay there. You can't come or come or go. So, so um, I would find you know refuge in in lifting in this basement, uh, more like a dungeon is what we called it, the dungeon. And that's where like the journey pretty much started. Interesting. So were you, were you strong before that? Did you, uh, did you feel like you were genetically strong? Yeah, genetically, yeah, decent. I mean, at any time, I mean, again, it was my body weight, but I could bench press probably around 300 pounds. It's between 275, 300 pounds. So, I mean, whatever you want to consider strong. Uh, well, that's strong. But at that point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, I want to talk about your... So so I read that you were actually... Uh, so you were a drug addict and also you were, got arrested for selling drugs. Is that true? How did that... Yeah, what, what exactly happened? So, uh, I mean, from experimenting in high school, and that's what kind of was my downfall in football, just partying and, you know, drinking on the weekends and drug use. And I'm not one of those guys that could balance the two. And, you know, which in the beginning, you know, it was just it might have been, you know, in the off season, and then it would be, you know, every now and then and then it, it became more frequent and, you know, which carried over through high school and then through college. And once I got kicked out of college is when it really spiraled out of control as far as, uh, you know, whatever drugs, it didn't matter. Prescription pills, um, MDMA, uh, cocaine, whatever. I mean, whatever whatever um i felt like doing at the moment and i wasn't the one to be able to control it so in order to feed my addiction and, and the lifestyle that i lived you know i had to sell drugs you know so um i'm not saying i was a pablo escobar but you know i had a decent lifestyle and, and you know i lived you know i lived well and um i lived to be the life of the party that's interesting, man, because usually, you know, it's either you're a drug dealer or you're a user. You're able to do both, man. It's, it's, I thought it was interesting when I read about that. Well, and, and, like, in order for me to be able to, like, sell drugs, I had to be intoxicated because, I mean, dealer, I mean, you got to think about it. When you're, if you're on the highway and you got 50 pounds in the car, 100 pounds in the car, like, that's a, some, for me, I, I'm a nerve wreck, you know? But, um, you know, using, you know, prescription pills just help kind of uh, blanket those feelings and not, you know, really care. So I was able to do things without even, you know, caring about doing them, you know. Um, but, you know, eventually the, it, it, it takes over, that lifestyle takes over. Um, I, I got to a point to where I would take 10, 10 15 Xanax bars at one time and and hop, in, hop behind the wheel and drive and party, you know, just that, that lifestyle. when. Um, but that's what I thrived off of. I wanted to be the life of the party. I wanted to be known for the guy that, that had the best drugs, um, like a rock star lifestyle, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what made you change? It was, uh, you got arrested, right? You were facing five so, years. Yeah, no, I, I was facing two five year prison sentences. And, uh, what really hit home was this was the first time I was, I was, um, locked up being away from my daughter. So previous, I had a, I had a kid about a, maybe six months before I got busted. Well, was six months. Yeah. Six months before I got busted. And once I got busted, you know, um, being away from her and not, you know, getting to be a dad and starting to miss out on certain things like her walk and talk. It just, it really, uh, struck me to the core, but 
man, I, ultimately I can't, and, and I'm a big, I'm huge in my faith. And if, if, if Jesus Christ didn't change my heart, my life, then I would still be the same guy because I see these things over and over again, this, this, this vicious cycle of God's repeating the same thing. Uh, but I tell you what, in two, October 25th, 2012 was my daughter's first birthday. And we spent it in a visitation room um, behind the glass. And it was probably one of the most realistic moments I've ever had because it, it just woke me up. I, I remember having friends in, in my neighborhood because I grew up in the projects, a lot of broken families and a lot of their dads absent. But I remember friends telling me, like, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to hang out that weekend because they had to go, you know, five hours to go see their dad um, that's serving prison time. And I just remember thinking, like, I would never be one of those dads. I would never be one of those dads. And, you know, in that moment of me sitting there um, in front of my daughter and watching her take a couple steps, and I'm just like, I'm that dad. I've become that dad. And uh, which which forced me to change, and, and the, the saying, the the pain of changing, um, the pain of staying the same became greater than the pain of changing. So it was more painful to live in that lifestyle, to stay in that lifestyle, um, in order for what I mean, more than, than than to push me to change. It had something had to happen, you know. Um, it's like two unstoppable forces colliding like something's gonna have something big is gonna happen you know that's that's the pretty much the rebirth of julius maddox is it true that you dealt with extreme depression as well yeah that's what pushed me to start lifting in the beginning so like i, I just remember like being so depressed like um uh coding coding promethazine um xanax bars uh liquid lower tab those were my things i loved I loved using those type of uh, uh, drugs, and it, it left me in such a deep state to where, like, it was just hard to be happy about anything, you know, because I supplemented for so long. But um, I just remember, you know, dealing with life on life's terms. Like, at the age of 26 was the first time I've ever held a full-time job, you know, and uh, just dealing with life at that point was just, you know, at some points, like, I wanted to, I didn't want to be on this earth anymore, you know, I just, I didn't want to live anymore because I've just, you know, using drugs for so long and going out chasing after that high, you just always, like, when you get sober, you stay at this, you stay at a level where you're at such low spirits, you you know, you're not too intrigued about anything in life and um, lifting, going down to that basement after work every single day, just as Eddie Hall would say, ironing out my problems with the iron uh, really, really helped. And once I started to become physically, somewhat physically uh, fit, um, everything else like worked together spiritually, mentally. And it was like this tripod where um, everything started. To, I started to feel better about myself. I started to feel more confident. I started to see myself attack goals that I never thought that I would be able to, to, to achieve. And, you know, in that moment, life started to change as I progressed uh, in, in in lifting weights. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, what you're describing, a lot of people are going through right now, you know, the depression, uncertainty for the future, you know, uh, not not because of the drugs, but really just, just the whole pandemic. And, you know, we see in, in the fitness industry, a lot of people are suffering right now. The gyms are closed in many areas, you know what I mean? Uh, do you have any advice for those people that are going through a depression right now? Yeah, I think the main thing is, is you got to hold on and you got to reach out. There's so many people, whether they're pro high profile people or not, but but you have to reach out and, and, and let out how you're feeling. You can't bottle these feelings up. Um, you have to talk to somebody. You have to reach out and, and, and find some sort of motivation. And you got to look at it as this, uh, just like this at any other point in life, there's always going to be, you're always going to be faced challenges. And it's up to us on how we're going to attack that challenge and, 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 and what, how, what the fruit that we're going to bear on the other side of that challenge. So, so guys, the people that are dealing with this right now, you just have to rage war. You have to, you have to be all out, um, ready to wage war and, 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 and fight the fight, man. It's just, that's what we're about because I went through a season again. Earlier, earlier um, in the pandemic to where 
like I'm 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 just in a funk and I can't nothing's going right, training's not going right. Um uh family life is, you know, being at home with the kids all day. Um it's just things where I was just in a state and and, and, and I thought about it like but these are the these are the reasons why we're built to be able to endure these things. You know, like so the mind is so strong, mankind is so strong, guys, that we are able to handle these things. We just have to one, utilize our circle, people around us, to be able to help spark that motivation. And, and two, is you just have to do it. Just like Nike, you gotta get out there, you gotta do it. You gotta find it somewhere. Whether you're just starting with running, jogging, uh, doing push ups. Um, but I mean, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but at the end of the day, the, the, we have to find something. We just can't give up and surrender. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you, man. And I appreciate those words, man. I feel like a lot of people will, will find it useful. Yeah. Um, so when you discovered, you mentioned when you discovered the weights in the basement, you started working out and getting stronger. That was kind of your rebirth and that was, uh, your new life that you discovered. Uh, but was it difficult because essentially, you know, I don't know, you know, how, you, how do you create income from that, you know what I mean? Because you were used to a certain lifestyle, probably making money from, from whatever you were doing to the point where you just started working out. How did you turn your life around financially? Well, um, and I mean this, and I know some people don't agree, but like the, the Lord provided, man. It's like I went from, you know, making a decent amount of money to, you know, in the beginning working jo audience jobs to where I would make like $100 a day and that would be shoddy. Like I would only be working like two or three days a week. So maybe two to $300 a week. But as I continue to stay faithful uh, in the small things, um, you know, the Lord provided abundance. And, 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 the, and what I mean by that is, is more job opportunities came um, and my pay increased. And then I got hired on full time with a with a paint contracting company and I was making you know anywhere from 650 to 700 dollars a week and even, even though it was manual labor it was tough labor it was well worth it but then I got the opportunity to uh, work at the same facility that I went through that helped me change my life and you know uh, it was it was as a, as a counselor um, and you know that that you know, it was a blessing in itself and to be able to provide for my family. But once I continued to, to, to work and I, like there was at one point I had, I had three jobs, you know what I mean? Like I never had a drive ever in my life to, I just didn't understand how people got up at five or six o'clock in the morning and went to work. Like I'd never seen that in my household. My dad partied, all, you know, for a living. I would see my mom get up and go to work and provide, but my dad was a partier, you know? So I would see my, I'd get up in the morning for school and see my dad like still laying on the couch, you know, uh, hung over from the day before, you know? So, um, I didn't, I didn't see that. I just didn't understand how people could go to work and, and making, you know, three, $400 a week and paying, giving it all out to be bills. And by the end of the month, month they're broke. Um, so I had to live that for a while, you know? Uh, but here's, here's the crazy thing. All the money that I made, the whole lifestyle, ultimately, all I did was trade it in for an orange jumpsuit because the police took everything. My car got took, whatever whatever they seized, the money that they had, that I had, the money that I had on me at the time. Um, but there came a point to where I just remember having, you know, a little bit of money in the bank. And I was so content because the relief of, uh, you know, keep trying to keep up with the Joneses, keep up with everybody else. And the lifestyle and having to compete with people as far as money wise, um, I didn't have to worry about that no more, you know. So, um, and I found out, you know, once I stopped spending a lot of a lot of money on drugs, like I could save money. I became more responsible and budgeted my money, and and it, it at the end of the day, it all it all worked out. But I did get move into yeah to a season where I was working, you know, three jobs, had uh, four kids at home, a wife. And, and was just grinding and still working out. I mean, just, I just, I wouldn't sleep. I wouldn't, but eventually that, that stuff comes to an end. We can't function like that for, you know, for years upon years until I landed my first uh, contract with, uh, with Tough Raps. And that, that kind of led to, you know, kind of open the doors for other opportunities.